Hi everybody, Patrick here from EscapeRoomElectronics.com and EngineeringShot.com. Uh, I've been dragging my feet a little bit with these new ultrasonic transmitter and receiver videos. Um, I've done the video manual for the ultrasonic, my new 2017-2018 uh, uh, upgrade to the uh, ultrasonic transmitter and receiver kits. So now I'm going to create the, the assembly videos and once I'm done both assembly videos I'll list them uh, up for sale at uh, EngineeringShock.com. So for this video what we're going to do is we're going to assemble a transmitter from scratch. If you want to see the video manual um, please look below, it's linked there. So we've got our custom PCB, uh, a uh, 100 ohm resistor, two 1k ohm resistors, a 2k ohm 10k turn pot, an ultrasonic transmitter, a 2N2222 NPN transistor, four 10 nanofarad ceramic capacitors, a momentary push button, 8 pin dip socket, 555 timer, 8 pin dip, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, six 2-pin headers, two 3-pin headers, a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, and last but not least, uh, a bunch of 2-pin jumpers. So first things first, let's solder in the resistors. Now it's very important that you follow along because some of the components on the circuit board are not, um, are not labeled so because of the space limitations so we've got our single 100 microfarad or our 100 ohm resistor sorry and that goes in right here in the R3 slot 100 R uh, our two 1k ohm resistors go into the R4 slot and the R6 slot now R6 is labeled 1.2k R6 it is actually a 1k so 1k and R6 and uh, R4 is labeled 1k R4 place your second uh, resistor in that slot. I solder them up, make sure there are no shorts, and next we will solder our uh, our capacitors. Okay, first the ceramic capacitors. We've got four little ceramic capacitors, I believe they're labeled 102, and one larger one labeled 104. The 104 capacitor is soldered in the upper right slot right here. And all of the remaining uh, 102s, the 10 nanos, go here, 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 and here. Solder them all into place, make sure that there are no shorts, and next we will do our single electrolytic capacitor. The 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor has a long lead and a short lead. Long lead is positive, short lead is negative, and it goes in the C3 slot in the upper right. There's a hole in the, uh, a hole in the left and a hole in the right. The hole in the left has a little plus sign above it. We want our long lead to go in the left hole, and our short lead to go in the right hole. So solder that up, and next we will do our 3-pin headers and our 2-pin headers. So, two 3-pin headers, six two pin headers. Our two three pin headers go here. This is our power slot labeled a 9V, G, D, and G, and D, and G, and D. And our second one goes right here labeled A slash B. And our six two pin headers go uh, under C1, C2, C3. And uh, right here, SIG, G, D, in, G, D, and power. Solder those into place and next we'll solder our uh, power button. The button only fits in one way. Pop it in from above and uh, make sure that it's flush to the board before you solder. The NPN transistor has a flat side, which actually has writing on it, the side that's facing us right now, and a curved side, which it can pivot on. And the slot right here is where it goes. And as you can see, there's a flat side on the uh, footprint and a curved side facing the back. You want to make sure that the flat side is facing the bottom of the board from this perspective and that the curved side is facing the back of the board from this perspective. I'll solder it into place just so you can see. The 2K ohm resistor goes in the slot right here labeled FRQ ADG, ADJ sorry, for a frequency adjust. As you can see on the upper right there is a little uh, screw indicator on the footprint. That is this little screw right here. You want to make sure from a bird's eye view that the screw uh, side fits in like so. Just like that. Okay, we're almost done. As you can see, the socket has a little nick, a notch on the left hand side, and so does the chip. Those are our indicators. On the footprint, it might be a little bit difficult because of the shadow this, this component casts, but there's a little notch on the left hand side of the footprint. Make sure that from a bird's eye view, the socket goes in with the notch facing the left, and then once the socket is soldered into place, after ensuring that there are no shorts, that you place the chip into the socket with the notch facing the left from this perspective. Here we go, the notch is facing the left. Now all we have to do is solder in our transducer. Here's a fun tip for soldering in your transducer. First things first, add a big glob of solder to this pad. Don't do anything after that, just wait until uh, the video resumes. Now that we've added our glob of solder, 
we want to look at the transducer itself. On the one side, one pin of the transducer, so I hope it's, I don't think it's focusing very well on my camera, but there's a little, little notch. Let's see here. Yes, there's a little notch on one of the pins around it, like a little circle around one of the pins of the base. That indicates our negative. That is our negative pin. We want to solder our negative pin here. So how are we going to do that? What I like to do is place them on the end of the table, uh, put a counterweight on the back, heat up that solder, maybe add a little bit of tinning to this pin, the negative pin, and when I've applied heat, I rest it on there, make sure that it's set, I remove, so my, I remove my iron and I blow on the, on the, uh, the solder glob, and once it, uh, once it uh, cools, I solder the other pin. Now that we've got the one soldered on nicely, we can solder the other pin. Now we're all done and we're ready to select our settings. Uh, for test, check out the video below, the video manual. Thanks for watching. When I have uh, a spare uh, few hours uh, this week, I will create the assembly video for the receiver. Thanks for watching everyone. Check out the links below.